Hello, I'm Shalon Geva from University College London, and in this audio presentation, I will give you an overview of our paper, Contributions of Bilateral White Matter to Chronic Aphasia Symptoms as Assessed by Diffusion Tensor MRI, which was published in Brain and Language in November 2015. Aphasia is a language disorder which develops as a result of left hemispheric brain damage. And there is currently a debate in the literature whether language reorganization, which is related to recovery, takes place only in perilesional areas, that is, in the left hemisphere, in areas around the lesion, or also in contralesional areas in the right hemisphere. And current studies and models suggest that beneficial right hemispheric activation is related to having a larger lesion, lesions which affect crucial areas for language processing, and having severe symptoms at the acute stage. However, previous studies mainly looked at the integrity and activation of gray matter, and there is very little work on white matter and language recovery. So in this study, we investigated whether right hemispheric white matter integrity predicts behavioral performance on various language tasks. We tested 15 chronic patients with aphasia following a left MCA territory stroke, and you can see the distribution of their lesions in the image on the right. We also tested a group of matched healthy volunteers. All the patients performed various language tasks, and all participants had a diffusion MRI scan, which allows us to look at white matter changes. Our analysis focused on fractional anisotropy, or FA. FA is a measure of diffusion anisotropy, which reflects both the degree of biological barriers to diffusion, for example, the myelin, which wraps the accents, as well as the degree of complexity in the underlying white matter fiber architecture. I would refer to the various measurements of diffusion obtained from the diffusion MRI as reflecting white matter integrity. Using histogram analysis and tract-based spatial statistics, or TBSS, we found that there was a highly significant difference between patients and controls in white matter integrity of the left hemisphere, both inside and outside the lesion. We also saw that patients' performance on most of the language tasks correlated with FA. However, when looking at various predictors for left hemisphere FA, both when including and excluding the lesioned area, we saw that the lesion size was a significant predictor over and above other variables. In contrary, in the right hemisphere, we did not see any differences between patients and controls, and also we found no correlation between patients' language performance and white matter integrity measures. We next attempted to track the arcuate fasciculus of each participant in both hemispheres. The image below shows regions of interest used for tracking and the average arcuate fasciculus of all control participants. We found that in the patient group, tracked volume and mean FA of the right hemisphere arcuate fasciculus did not predict behavioral measurements. We also compared two groups of patients, those for which we could or could not track the arcuate fasciculus of the left hemisphere. We found that patients for whom we could not track the left hemisphere arcuate fasciculus had larger lesions, performed significantly worse on language tasks, but importantly, they did not differ in measurements of the right hemispheric arcuate fasciculus. Looking at the difference between patients and controls with regard to the left and right arcuate fasciculus, we found that there were no differences in the right hemisphere. However, in the left hemisphere, controls had higher mean FA of the arcuate fasciculus. Lastly, we looked at lesion tract overlap, which is a measure of the level of direct damage to the arcuate fasciculus as a result of the stroke. We saw that lesion tract overlap correlated with performance on all the language measurements, as you can see below. However, it was not a significant predictor of right hemisphere white matter integrity. In summary, Using various methods, we found that left hemisphere white matter damage, both inside and outside the lesioned area, predicts language function among patients with chronic post-stroke aphasia. However, we found no evidence that integrity of the right hemisphere white matter in general, or of the arcuate fasciculus in particular, predicts language function following stroke.